Modern day Iran is old. It's one of the oldest continuously inhabited civilizations in the world, with cities and settlements dating back nearly 7,000 years. The Greeks called it Persia, but it was actually home to many powerful civilizations over the years, including the mighty Achaemenid Empire, one of the largest empires in history. Ancient Persia was a land of contrast. They had some of the most extreme, crazy, and creepy laws any empire has ever had in history. So let's dive in and take a look at these Persian rules and see how true to history they actually are. Liar, liar, pants on fire. For a certain Persian queen, it was more like lines and non-negotiable, or you'll get molten gold down your throat. Gold played a big part in the rise and fall of civilizations over the years. Wars have been fought over it, and entire continents have been destroyed because of it. But for the Alchemenet queen Parasatis, the ore was a good way to execute people who lied to her. Queen Parasatis was a wickedly crafty woman. She was King Darius II's wife the king who ruled the Achaemenid Empire from 423 to 405 BC, and the mother of King Artaxerxes II, who ruled from 405 to 359, and she was a big part of the reason they held on to the throne. Perisatis had an elaborate network of spies and didn't hesitate to take out anyone she thought was a threat to the throne. And she also really, really didn't like lying. Sources claim that she punished those caught fibbing by pouring molten gold down their throats until they were no longer alive. Now, whether or not they reclaimed the valuable ore from the victim afterwards is unknown, but you would assume the royals didn't let it go to waste. However, whether or not the Persians off people with liquid gold is up for debate. In Zoroastrian text, molten metal was often a way of figuring out how pure someone's heart was. If the scalding hot ore was dripped on someone's body and they felt no pain, they were good with God. But if it hurt, it meant they were liars or were helping out someone who was a liar. Lying was the purest forms of evil in Zoroastrianism, so much so that one word for evil translates to the lie. As far as the use of molten gold to punish liars, the whole thing could have been fabricated by the Romans, who really didn't like the Persians. The Roman Emperor Valerian was captured by the Sasanian king Shapur I in 3rd century AD, but what happened next is up for debate. According to some sources, he got gold poured down the throat. Others say he was actually stuffed taxidermy style and put on display. But others say Shapur treated him fairly well, sending him to a small city and letting him live out the rest of his days in relative comfort. Another source claims Shapur set him free after he helped build a Roman style dam. History can get blurry sometimes. Don't steal. Usually the only way a tree can end your life is if it falls on you. But if you lived in ancient Persia, there was another way. Getting caught stealing was a big no-no. Today, unless we're talking Grand Theft Auto or some hedge fund manager swindling millions from investors, stealing is usually just a petty misdemeanor. But the punishment for theft in ancient Persia was quite often the death penalty, and how they carried it out was pretty gruesome. The executioners would drag the convicted thief over to a pair of trees, trees that were apparently small enough to be bent, but tall enough to do what would happen next. The two trees were bent down and tied together. The thief's legs were then tied to the trees, one leg to each. The executioner then would cut the rope holding the two trees together, and the unfortunate pickpocketer would be torn in half, his now very divorced legs dangling in the treetops. The limbs were left there in the trees to serve as a warning to any other potential kleptomaniac. Often this punishment was served to people who robbed travelers along roadways and judges would try to find suitable trees close to where the crime had occurred. Don't accept bribes. Bribery is another crime that today might carry with it some jail time, but again, back in ancient Persia, things were a lot different. Around 530 BC, an Achaemenid royal judge named Sisamnus made the mistake of accepting a bribe in exchange for a favorable verdict. The king at the time, Cambyses II, found out, and he wasn't very happy about it. He made an example out of the disgraced Sisamnus and determined that he should no longer have access to his own skin. It was a warning to the next judge who succeeded him to stay on the straight and narrow. That next judge happened to be Simsanus' own son, Otanes. In an extra cruel move, Cambyses had the son's new judicial chair lined with the skin of his father. 
This horrible story was written down for posterity by the Greek historian Herodotus, whose stories recount the entire Greco-Persian Wars. But like the story about Queen Parasatis and the molten gold, we might need to take this one with a grain of salt. Don't make the king's wife angry. Losing your life once seems bad enough, but what about three times? For those unlucky enough to make the royals really angry, something called the Triple Death awaited. One such Triple Death occurred during the reign of Cyrus the Great. Cyrus was pretty great. He founded the Achaemenid Empire in 559 and helped it become the largest empire the world had ever known up until that point. He was also a progressive king who championed equal rights and religious freedom among his people. A clay cylinder known as the Cyrus Cylinder is a cuneiform script telling of the great deeds done by Cyrus. But some say it's one of history's first human rights charters, though others say it's just a piece of propaganda. Maybe it's a bit of both. Cyrus was so great that he is even mentioned in the Old Testament, where he is the only non-Jewish person that was called a Messiah. This is because he's credited with freeing the Jews from the persecution of the Babylonians and giving them back their holy lands in Jerusalem. Cyrus may have been a benevolent messiah, but he could have also been acting in his and his people's own interest. He was a believer in Zoroastrianism, a dualist religion a bit similar to monotheism, but a bit different, which proclaimed a soon-to-be battle between good and evil was in the works. Getting the Jews and their god on his side might have been a little like keeping your friends close, but your enemies closer. According to more Greek accounts by the likes of Herodotus and Plutarch, one of Cyrus's wives, he had two during his life and neither historian specifies which one, one of his wives took offense to something a lowly eunuch said to her and was sentenced to the dreaded triple death. First his eyes were torn out, then he was flayed alive, but not fatally. Finally he was crucified. The end. It seems one of the general rules in ancient Persia was not to say anything at all to upset the queens. There are all kinds of stories of Persian queens doing horrible things to people who didn't seem to be guilty of much else except saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Remember Queen Parasatis of molten gold down the throat fame? She also apparently liked to sentence people to death by means of something called scaphism, which involves sticking the convict between two boats, one on top of the other so they're in a kind of tomb, then pouring milk and honey inside, and finally throwing insects and or rats into the mix and letting them slowly eat them alive. Death and Taxes Now this one might not be as gruesome as the stuff we've just mentioned, but for many of us it might be just as cringeworthy. The ancient Persians invented taxes. Well, strict state-regulated taxes anyway. Taxes existed before the Achaemenid Empire, but they also were not very well regulated. When the empire reached its peak, it was huge. It stretched from Central Asia to the Middle East and to North Africa and parts of Eastern Europe. No empire in history up until that point had covered more ground. Darius the Great, the emperor at the time, needed to figure out how to collect stuff from people spread across such vast distances. So he created a system that over the millennia eventually turned into the IRS. A bit of hyperbole, but not really. Thanks, Darius. What else do you want to know about ancient Persia? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more nutty history.